Hello everybody and welcome to my top 11 worst games of the uh, worst I'm sorry I meant to say welcome to my top 11 best games of 2015 now I, I just recorded this video but none of the sound recorded so I'm going through it again so it might be a little weird it's it's pre-recorded and I am talking over it so if it kind of like jumps around a little like I, I am recording over my video I just recorded so yeah if I get cut off you'll understand why so really I am just going to talk about you know my top 11 best games of 2015 shall we start so um, this right here Grand Theft Auto 5 not Grand Theft Auto 5 I'm sorry I'm chipping over my words Grand Theft Auto for for the PlayStation 4 HD edition was great it was it was the collection of you know major old Grand Theft Auto games and it was great because it, it's not really cheating because this game did come out this year and it was just the old Grand Theft Auto games you know what I mean so like it was really 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 fun to be able to play them on the PlayStation 4 and that's why I put this in number 11 we are going from the meh to the best of the best so yeah um I really, really did like the Grand Theft Auto HD collection. Uh, I definitely do think that if you're a fan of the old Grand Theft Auto games, you should go pick it up because you will also really, really enjoy it. And yeah, all in all, it is a really, really awesome little collection of game here. It didn't come out that long ago, too, on the PlayStation 4. So they're, they're fairly newer games. They're newer old games, but... Yeah, it's pretty good. They're pretty, pretty good. So, um, I definitely suggest you go and you check these out. So, let's go ahead here and, um... Alright, coming in at number 10, we have Just Cause 3. Now, you're probably wondering why Just Cause 3 is so far down on the list. And that's because it was repetitive. It got to the point where I was like, do this, do that, do this, do that. And the story missions were also more of the do this, do that, do this, do that. And, you know, once I had taken over all the red zones, the game just kind of became boring. But it was really, really fun, really awesome. There were some non-scripted events that seemed so scripted, but it was so, so, so amazing that you need to go pick this out if you're doing, like, an epic moments compilation or something really fun game guys so that is why I am recommending it on the best games list let's get the next one up here uh, here we go number eight battlefield hardline now a lot of you are probably really surprised that this is on here because I am such a big call of duty fanboy and call of duty black ops 3 managed to get on my worst games of the year list whereas this is on my best games of the year list and this game was perfect it had by far by very very far the best story mode in a video game shooter ever it was great it was a great 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 great, great story the online mode was a little iffy but I mean it had an amazing amazing story and it cannot be beat I'm yet to see any valid reasons on why this game's a bad game, but I know a lot of stupid people are putting it on their worst games of the year list, and I, I, I can't figure out why. It is a great, great game. Um, if you're new to the Battlefield series, go pick this one up. It's probably going to be cheap because it's gotten bad ratings, but it's a great, 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 great game. So that is why I am suggesting it to you. Coming in at number 7, we have Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Now, Assassin's Creed Unity and Assassin's Creed Rogue managed to find their way onto my worst games of the year list last year. This game definitely redeemed the Assassin's Creed style, title. I thought it went as far as Saints Row to the point where it was like no return, bad game, but this was a great game. It definitely, definitely mastered a lot of the controls right. A lot of fighting, a lot of stealth. It mastered the character swapping really, really well. And, yeah, 
this was a really good game. So go pick this Assassin's Creed game up if you want a good Assassin's Creed. It kind of reminded me of Assassin's Creed 2 in a way. So here we go. Coming in at number 6, I believe. Did we skip one? Nope. Okay, we're good. Coming in at number 6 is the Minecraft Story Mode. Minecraft Story Mode was really, really good. It was a really good game, and it proved that Telltale could do lighthearted games really, really well, unlike Tales from the Borderland, which also found its way onto my worst games of the year list. But this one was really, really good. This was a really good Telltale game. Um, it was, of course, more for children, and uh, my little cousins are playing it, and they love it. So if you have, you know, a son or a daughter or siblings, younger siblings, you should pick this game up for them for, like, Christmas or something because it's a really, really good game. It doesn't really follow, like, a Minecraft story, but it's it's really, really good. Like, it doesn't follow any of, like, the Minecraft 1 story, but you know what I mean? It's it, it wouldn't be able to do that correctly. It's a really, really, really good game on the other hand, though. You should really go and get it, and that's why it's so far up here. Coming in at number 5 is the Rise of the Tomb Raider game. This was a really, really good Tomb Raider game. I mean, it reminded me of the old Tomb Raiders a lot, and I really, really like the old Tomb Raiders a lot. This is by far my favorite Tomb Raider game, and that's saying a lot. I did play the old Tomb Raiders, and I really loved going around Laura's mansion and whatnot, but... This was a really good Tomb Raider game, and it was really fun, and it was really awesome, and it's probably going to be on, stay, on, sale soon for, on sale soon for the Steam Christmas sale. So you should go pick this up when it goes on sale on Steam. It is really, really fun, and a really, really great Tomb Raider game if you like those types of go and get all the collectibles type game. Now, coming in at number four, I believe we're at, is Super Mario Maker. And now, really, both Super Mario Maker and that game that Nintendo came out with, Splatoon, could go on this list. Because they're both really, really good um, Wii U games. They're really fun. They're really unique. And once again, they're great for children. So if you have any, you know, younger children, younger siblings, younger cousins, these would be really good games for them. Sadly, it is only on the Wii U, but still... These were really good games, they were really fun, and yeah, they are recommended by me. So, go try these out if you haven't already tried these out. Coming in at number three, I believe we are at number three, I don't really have a way of checking, but, no, we're at number four, so I must have messed up somewhere. Coming in at number four, we have the Game of Thrones, a Telltale Games series this game is really really awesome like this is one of the best telltale games out there i mean it's really far up there with the walking dead this has the best story in a game ever this game has the best story that i have ever ever played it is so awesome and so amazing and it was nowhere near a disappointment it was amazing and no matter what story you get it was a bound to be a sad one everybody kind of had their own story and no matter what ending you got you know it would leave you in tears it was a great great game and it, they, they left it off where it could be a perfect sequel to this game it was really awesome number three fallout 4 now I loved Fallout 4. Fallout 4 was an awesome, awesome game. However, if I had to choose between Fallout 4 or Fallout New Vegas, I would choose New Vegas in a heartbeat. New Vegas is much better than Fallout 4 in a lot of ways, and I think that's just because of how much the series has changed. But Fallout 4 compared to every other game... Fallout 4 was great. It was super fun. I had so much fun roaming the wastelands of Boston. Like, the, all the weapons were unique. The whole synth story was amazing. It was a really, really good, good game. And I really do think that you should go pick it up if you haven't picked it up and played it already. Like the billions of people who already have. It's a great, great game. So, yeah. You should really go check it out.
now here we go coming in at number two the game that everybody seemed to have forgotten about for some time but now that you're seeing it again you will definitely agree with me that it deserves this number two spot on the top 11 ga best games of 2015 because Until Dawn was an amazing game. It was almost like a uh, Heavy Rain uh, Beyond Two Souls for the PlayStation 2. It was really, really great. Had a great story. Always kept you on the edge of your seat. Wondering what was going to happen next. Where each character was going to end up next. You know, how your story was going to end. And it just added so much, you know you know, tenseness. Like, oh my god, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? It was such a good game. Now, coming in at number one. My favorite game of all time, and I'm sure a lot of you could have guessed this, Life is Strange. It is my number one favorite game of ever. It is so, so good. And, um, you know, if you want to know what my number two game for best games I've ever played is, it's um, Tack and the Power of Juju for the PlayStation 2. But this game was so good. I loved this game. It had such a beautiful, like, little story, beautiful graphics, and it was such, you know, it was such an emotional, awesome game, and, you know, the plot twists were crazy. Each episode left you on a cliffhanger, you know, and you really, really were left wanting more at the end of the game. I do think they got a little lazy on the final episode, but other than that, it was such an awesome, awesome game, and I definitely recommend picking it up right now if you haven't already. So yeah, thank you everybody for watching my top 11 best games of 2015 list. Watch yesterday's video for my worst of 2015. And check out next year's for my best of 2016 and my worst of 2016 list. I hope to see you guys then. And I already have a feeling that Dishonored 2 is going to make it on the best list. I do just have a feeling that that's what's going to be. So yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Have a great day. And bye.